Bye. Come in and up. Bye. How good's that? Can I eat some? Just, come on, please. No, no, please. Best had some. He did. He did. You actually go for that going to the moon thing? We went to the moon, Ace. Could you imagine having a race on the moon in little moon buggies? You'd have a Red Bull moon buggy and an Erebus moon buggy and a... Last lap, mate, last lap. There's a car in the wall at the elbow on the outside. Stay on the racing line and you'll be fine. Yeah, I saw it on the TV. The margin is now out to 4.1 seconds. Reynolds is opening up the gap. It's one lap remaining for David Reynolds. Holden fans are loving this. This could be the biggest moment of Dave Reynolds' life. The grand final of our game. The biggest race in Australian motorsport. Big Al, can you believe it or what? I can't believe it. I can't talk. 1,000 kilometres later, David Reynolds, you are the man. Get out! Go! 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 That is a brand new tyre. Like, no way. It's a democracy with a benevolent dictator. And a wonderful moment for everybody at Erebus Motorsport. Has tripped over the top of McLaughlin. You can see clearly, watch it again before you accuse him. So he's looking for someone to blame, so he's trying to come and blame me. Is David Reynolds from Erebus Penrat Racing. You don't understand. Oh, I did. And lost contact. Erebus definitely uh, one of those teams you label with they punch above their weight, and uh, they're not—they haven't been a factory team. They're not—they're not one of the, the teams that we know has got the, the mass resources that have got everything at their disposal to get the job done. They've just got good people, good management, good leadership. Obviously, Betty is so passionate about the sport, and they've got a couple of great drivers. And last year, you know, we saw them really starting to do things that uh, we're expecting is going to follow through into 2019, and, and have them as, as real contenders for a team that isn't, I suppose, seen as one of the heavyweights. Erebus are the underdogs, mate. Everyone loves the underdog, and when they get up there and have a, a result, even the Ford fans tend to like it. So, yeah, they're, they're the, everyone's second favourite, aren't they? And they're slowly becoming a lot of people's number one pick. have been probably known as the young team and we are because you know, we've got a really good band of young people that are willing to work hard, want to work hard, want to learn. They are all uniquely qualified to do their jobs. They all know that we're Erebus and they do it for Erebus. No one does it as an individual. That's what keeps us together and that's why we don't need to have 40, 50 people. You're like, man, it's bloody loud. <laughs> have you heard like as you enter the plane? Yeah. Everyone gets along like house on fire. Um, Betty looks at us as her extended family. A massive family vibe. We're not one of the bigger teams, so that means we have to work a little bit harder probably. We have to be a lot closer and we're always together. We, we travel all together, so we are quite a close knit group.
We're right on the verge of celebrating 60 years of high quality international level touring car racing in Australia. Started all the way back in 1960 at a tiny little track called Nubla. Come 1997, after various iterations, we ended up with what we now know as supercars, was briefly V8 supercars. All the great characters of the sport, the warfare between the brands, the heroes and the villains, all in one little pressure cooker that's been going for 59 years and we've seen some extraordinary moments. And he is going straight to pole position, Murphy, a blistering oh, And Wincup gets his first Bathurst crown. Oh, look at this! Oh, look at that, that's so oh, no. He's got only a show. Craig Wells. Wells was sensational. James Courtney's about to play. Oh, no. He's in the fence! They're both in the fence! They're all in the fence! Oh. Unbelievable! The Bathurst 1000 victory! Oh. And Mostert tries to go around the outside. He comes a whack and another whack. And Mostert goes through on the inside. Supercars, apart from being the envy of the world and why, they're unique. Big high horsepower, move around a lot, express their body language. That makes them really hard to drive, and many have tried, very few have succeeded. So the, the whole Erebus story is a pretty amazing one. You know, Betty Klaminko, um, what she went through and what that team went through was just incredible, and it was a tough slog. It was a really, really challenging slog, and it needed someone like her that had that drive and passion and resource to, to actually get it done, and she's done it quite uniquely. We bought a Porsche. It was late, and they said, look, we can't give you any money off it, but we can send you for a driving course to Mount Cotton. And I went, Sounds good to me, let's go. So we went and at lunch, I just happened to sit next to Peter Hackett. I had no idea who Betty was. You know, they were just customers at the time and we were talking about motor racing and she said, so what do you do and where are you going? And We ended up sponsoring him and then we went in the GTs. And we made an arrangement with the AMG Customer Racing Program for Betty to be the first SLS GT3 sold outside of Europe and uh, we had a name change, and that's when we became Erebus Motorsport. My first win in GTs was at Phillip Island. I will never forget that. That was important because I felt what it felt like to win. Very quickly, Betty said, well, you know, let's, let's buy a workshop, let's run a second car, let's turn this into a small business. Ryan Madison was put in, he was one of my great mates as a general manager, and uh, he'd put in Barry Ryan as the strategist and a bit of an engineer to run our cars at the 12 hour. I finished up with Kelly Racing at the end of 2011, and I was asked to come and just manage the team for the weekend. He said, OK, how many pit stops have you ever done? And we went, what's a pit stop? We didn't know what a pit stop was, literally. So he taught us, and by the end of the weekend, we were the fastest. 2.2 odd Ks to go for the Liquimoli Bathurst 12 hour. This is going to be an incredible result for Erebus Motorsport. Winning the 12 hour was my biggest win. And then all of a sudden, you get hungry. That's when I said, what about V8s? Australian GT, a very, very different racing calendar compared to V8 Supercar. And Betty and Daniel said, I want more. We put it to AMG, Customer Sports Program, as a concept. Fast forward six months, the concept was effectively ratified and approved from that point. Mercedes-Benz win in the V8 Supercars for Erebus Motorsport. The problem was that we had to make the, the AMG HWA engines ourselves was getting too expensive. And that's where we decided to get a customer car off um, Walkinshaw, but then ultimately go our own way with it and um, develop it ourselves. Barry said, we're going to do it my way. And we did do it his way. What we've created now, which is a, an Erebus car that no one else can have, it's all our development, apart from the engine, of course, is to Walkinshaw, but it's a car that we've developed and we don't sell parts. We keep all the LIP in house. People actually say, oh, in the beginning, that say, oh, she's just doing it because she's got money and she's bored. No, it was nothing to do with that I had money and I was getting bored. It was because I loved it. For me, it was about the racing. I, I just fell in love with the atmosphere, the fans, the people, the cars. 
everything. It was, it just, it was meant to be. David Reynolds is now on target for a race victory. In 2018, Erebus Motorsport had their most successful season to date, finishing fourth in the championship. It's been a brilliant championship campaign. Winning the last race and looking so strong. It's been jammed with emotional moments, heartbreaking moments, moments of sheer racing magic. After more than six and a half thousand kilometres of racing across Australia and New Zealand, it's been a big, big battle of the heavyweights all season long. What an amazing drive today from David Reynolds. He's brilliant, he's fast, he's flamboyant. Take a bow. In what is typically a very male-dominated sport, Betty Klemenko is absolutely a pioneer for women. She's very passionate about her motor racing and isn't afraid to speak up and fight for what she believes is the right thing in the championship. We've got a fair few females in our team. I don't think it makes it any different. If you're good at your job, you'll get the job. And that's what Betty always says. And I suppose you just can't be sensitive working in this industry. It's a pretty good feeling. There's always been a few of us, uh, but to be one of the only few in pit lane is pretty impressive and it's good to be an influence to younger females. One of the most endearing parts about Betty is that she loves the fans. She's really engaged with them and she filters that down through her team to her drivers and to all of the staff that work with her. Betty is kind of like our racetrack mum. She's always looking out for myself and Dave and the whole crew and the whole team. She's always got our best interests at heart. She's always happy, very generous, always sees a positive side in life. What I call the heartland, the pure fan really adore. Ta da! <laughs> and another one. My father was a Hungarian immigrant. He was in a camp from the age of 18, not because he was Jewish, but because he was listening to the BBC. was there as a political prisoner. So he got a job with the commandant and he, he used to, it was called a putzer, and he used to shine his shoes and he would get the scraps like potato skins and stuff like that. So he could feed people around him. He came to this country and as he got off the boat, they gave him 10 pounds. This a Jewish organization gave him 10 pounds and he did everything from growing mushrooms under terrace houses, um, he worked for Anthony Hordens as a pack of storm and he, he started delicatessen at uh, Wynyard and he had uh, delivery boys every day. My father was one for punctuality and there was only one delivery boy that actually delivered on time. And so he said to this delivery boy, <clears throat> do you want to go into business with me? And the boy said, I've got no money. And he goes, nor do I but let's just go into business. I've seen this thing. He'd gone to America to find the relatives to see if they had survived. And he'd seen these things called strip malls where they put all the shops together and they were calling them shopping centers. He came back and he really wanted to do this. So they went to all the banks, they couldn't get a loan. They finally found a banker and they went to the first piece of land they, they bought and stood there. and. The banker said, oh, look, I'm going to loan you the money, but what's the name of the company? And they said, what do you mean? They said, well, you need to name the company. So my father said, well, we're in the western suburbs and we're standing in an empty field. Let's call it Westfield. And that's how that started, and the boy was Frank Lowy. I'm not sure exactly how it was brought into the world. I think it was a caesarean. Um, Back then, uh, adoptions were quite common. I mean, you'd go into a like the, the women's hospital and they'd have a special adoption room and it was what they called their orphanage. And you'd have like 30, 40 kids in there waiting to be adopted. 
and they rang them up and said, oh, we have a, a boy here who's, you know, matches your colouring. And he went there and my father goes, hold on, hold on, let me just have a look. So he walked up and down and I was the last child that came in. And because I was drug dependent, I was actually giggling, but he thought I was giggling, I wasn't giggling. I, I probably off from a tree or something. Um, and he said, I like her, she's got a sense of humour. And, that, and he took me instead. It was, it, it was very strange. I had a, a, I had a privileged life on one hand, but on the other hand, that life was also hard. Uh, I had a mother who was dying of cancer from when I was about five. Got to remember, this is back in the early late 60s, early 70s. They didn't have the medicine they have now, so there was a lot of pain involved. She was in crutches, and then one day she dropped me at school. I forgot to say goodbye to her. My my friends were there. I ran out of the car, and she went home. And the, I think the pain just got too much for her. And that day she committed suicide. I was told until I was. 35 or 36 that she had died in her sleep. Then my father died when I was 37 after he'd retired from Westfield. He's been gone now 21 years. My sister and myself look after these things. All right, so we'll just start off with some stuff independent of Adelaide. So main focus is do what we've been doing. Don't get carried away with expectations. So we've just got to do what we do. We're race winners, we're Bathurst winners, we're pole winners. There's a lot of teams in the last three years that haven't done any of those. So we've really got to be proud of ourselves and keep pushing to, to keep that because that's not easy to do it, but it's, it's even harder to keep it, so. Well, I think one of the things about Erebus is it's a comparatively small but efficient team atmosphere. And that really comes from how it's led. Courage, initiative, respect, teamwork. It all plays so much in our, our game, what we do. Barry's a good leader. He's hardcore, he's straight to the point, sometimes maybe too straight to the point, but I like that. There's no bullshit with Barry, and who doesn't like that? Respect your teammates and, and other teams. I threw the other teams in there because we probably should respect them, whether we do or not. Um, stand up for yourself and your teammates. Team comes down pit lane, want to start a fight. We're going to win it. Am I talking to the camera? Uh, look at me. All right. Barry is a boss. He would be very, very strong-willed, very emotional, which can be good and can be bad, as you'll see sometimes during the year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's yeah, Baz is. Um, he'll tell you how it is. If you're doing a job, he'll tell you you've done a job. Win as a team and lose as a team. I'm probably the worst loser out of a lot of us, and don't hide my emotions well, but. I need to do a better job. We all need to make sure we pat ourselves on the back when we win, we pat ourselves on the back when we lose. Barry's a good team boss. He's um, very different to Betty, a very different approach to it all. He's very intense, um, but at the same time, we all got the best interest of winning, and, and that's all he wants to achieve, so he's, he's a good boss. Should be a good weekend. Let's just do what we want. Worry about the rules later. Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> The men that Erebus really need to deliver this year are their drivers, David Reynolds and Anton Di Pasquale. David, he's 33, he's well into his career, fourth year with the team. And then you've got Anton, 23, second year with the team. He's got a lot to prove. He's trying to build his career. Last year you had a clear number one and number two driver, but this year it's just not the case. You've almost got two number ones. And to add a little more fuel to that fire, they're both out of contract at the end of this season. Dave Reynolds is a character, we all know that, but he's also a very intelligent man. He and I get on like a house on fire. He's, he's a son to me and that's exactly how I treat him. He's a person who will go out there and he'll fight the good fight and comes back in. The first thing he does when he comes out is crack a joke. I try not to laugh. He 
he's not normal. He's dead set not normal, but when he gets in a race car, he's one of the fastest guys out there. So, you know, his mouth gets him into trouble a lot of time, but it's also what, why the fans like him. He just says what he thinks. I was really worried. When he left Ford Performance and he went to Erebus, a few of us went, well, that's an unusual decision. You know, is that going to work for him to be able to make it all fly? Well, the click between he and his engineer has been extraordinary, and I think the fans appreciate all that he brings to the table. It's David Reynolds from Erebus Penrite Racing. He's a guy that, in the right atmosphere, is definitely in the top five drivers in the field. If you give him a good car on a certain day and allow him to drive the car the way he wants to drive it, it's pretty hard to beat. He's an exceptional talent. He just hasn't got the self-belief. For some reason, he just doesn't think he's as good as he is. If he goes really good and wins races, he thinks the car or the team. And as a person, he's sort of brought Erebus to where it is because of his patience in those first couple of years. Erebus definitely works for my style. It's 100% it's me down to a T. I didn't think, you know, I didn't really know joining this team how much it would suit me, but it suited me so much and improved my life, not just at racing, but outside of racing. I'm so much happier and easier to be around. Anton Di Pasquale, Anton was always going to be a professional racing driver. I know Anton always thought he was going to be a professional racing driver. I don't think he's geared himself in terms of life skills to do anything else. And I say that as a compliment. I mean, the kid was just brilliant in the junior formula. He shone. Australian karting champion, Formula Ford champion, European Formula Renault champion. Mark Larkham sent him to me along to, to learn how to drive a car with a roof on it. Spent a couple of hours in the car and then right then I realised that I, this is the best racing driver I've ever seen in my life. I've been here my entire life, sort of growing up on this farm. Been around you know, tractors, cars, motorbikes since I was very young. Still living here, so a part of it day in, day out. It's, uh, it's good, you get to sort of just zone out and sort of reset and remember where you've you sort of come from and still enjoyable too, so there's a lot of other fun stuff we do on the farm other than just work. Barry Ryan started talking to me about him and could see what we're doing. Paul Morris started sort of nudging me, saying, yeah, we, we've got to look at this kid. I thought, this kid's got something. At that point, we thought, we've got to get this kid in somehow into the team, and Betty was against it because Betty was really passionate about her team's points. We had a good season the year before. I want to get more points. For me to get more points, I thought I needed an established driver, someone who can you can give the car to, comes in the top ten every round. We convinced Betty that Anton could do that. And I was like, hmm. Took a while, but I, I, I said, OK, every race, if the driver I wanted to get did better than Anton, they had to give me a, a beer. Anton didn't outscore him but Betty still saw the potential he had. It was one of my rare mistakes. I don't say that you know, I don't make mistakes, but it was one of my rare mistakes. But luckily I listened to Barry. Has that like a parallel park finish? 2019 predictions. I've been to Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske a few times now to the workshop, and I've got to tell you, the culture there is first class. It's all the signs of a winning team. 2018 champion Scott McLaughlin is on a high. We know how good he is, but there's a whole lot of blokes that want to knock him off the perch, no question about it. We've got five Kiwis in the field, one of the fastest women you'll find ever to drive any kind of car in Simona Di Silvestro from Switzerland. 2018 was so good. I'm hoping 2019 will be even better. 2019 goals are to win the championship. Anton will fulfil what I hope to be his potential. I'd love to win a race, love to get a podium, love to get some silverware. Erebus has been a team that have punched above their weight time and again to the point where I think they're actually 
now above their weight and they're an absolute front runner. But... Contesting the 2019 Supercast Championship, we have 13 teams, 24 drivers, three manufacturers, Nissans, Holdens and Fords. And no doubt about it, one of the most exciting things coming into this season is the introduction of the Mustang. The highly anticipated Ford Mustang has broken cover ahead of the 2019 Supercars season. The Mustang will make its debut at the Superloop Adelaide 500. On behalf of everybody involved in the Supercars Championship, I'd like to welcome Ford, Ford Performance and Mustang. 2019 is all about Mustang. The expectation around Mustang is that it brings back the traditional Ford and Holden rivalry. The time was right to get ourselves back into something that's frankly in our DNA. It's a great icon of a vehicle and I know damn well just how competitive the Mustang is. There's no question this new Mustang is very, very good. We open each season in Adelaide. It's the perfect location and always hot. The street circuit has got so much history, you know, back to Formula One when it started way back in the 80s, uh, through to what we've got now as a supercar event, you know, is just absolutely stunning. Sometimes when you're in certain parts of the city, it almost feels like it's a big country town, but when supercars roll in, the energy, the excitement really lifts. It's such a great buzz around town. I think it's the toughest one. It's the start of the year, there's no match fitness. The smallest mistake has big consequences. I think it's a sensational racetrack. Concrete canyon, high speeds, high risk, lots of things to go wrong and they usually do. It's that mix of a laid tarmac surface versus a street that's operational during the week with oil and gunk and cement and crud. So I like that. So it's bumpy, it's gnarly, it's got big curbs. So you gotta grab the car by the throat and manhandle it. The level of commitment everywhere is, is on the threshold of having a crash pretty much everywhere. When you multiply that by 78 laps, you go, wow, this is hard work. It's the best way possible that we could start a season. I can't wait for every year that we turn up at Adelaide. So Adelaide this year is going to be it's a bit of an unknown for us because the new Mustangs come in the technical rules change within the sport, which affects all the cars down pit lane. Judging by testing and the run we had towards the end of last year, we should have a strong car. Straight away, guys. Generally the hardest, most grueling race of the year. It's always super hot. I'm kind of dreading it a little bit because it's such a hard day, such a hard weekend. A lot of attention on us at the minute because everyone thinks we're you know, championship contenders. So I, just, I hope we can perform. Heading to Adelaide, it's my second time heading there in the main series. So feeling a lot more comfortable, a lot more confident, and then have a lot higher goals than what was of the 2018 season. It is a hard track, but it's uh, hopefully going to be nice to us. You turn up there as a driver nervous because it's the start of the season. You turn up there, you know, refreshed from a break, but there's all that unknowingness of what is going to transpire when you get out on that track, and it's a tough one. Cars are big, and you've got to keep stopping it, and you've got to turn it at 90 degrees in Adelaide, and turn it at 90 degrees again, and turn it at 90 degrees again, on its nose where it doesn't want to be, and then off its nose and 650 horsepower into the rear tyres, second gear driving off slow corners. The cars hate it and that's completely in reverse when you get to turn eight. Optimising his lap at the moment is Anton Di Pasquale. He's making the run down to turn eight. The approach speed here, 245 kilometres an hour. Breathe off the throttle. Oh, the great yeah, turn is in the wall. Di Pasquale has hit the wall hard. I hit the fan. That's all right. That's all right. Sorry. He picked up either the kerb or the wall and it violently jumped across the road. A sad image inside that cockpit from a young guy who got off to a great start. Reynolds is ninth and David stays where he is. 
So he's sitting in ninth in car number nine. David Reynolds and James Courtney, that's your 10. McLaughlin, Win Cup, Coulthard and Perkat, that's the top four. And unfortunately, damage on the car, no time recorded for Anton Di Pasquale. Just shows he's still got a lot to learn. He's just still a young bloke, but it's just not thinking. You're on your warm-up tyres. There's no reason to try and go that fast through turn eight. But anyway, he's having a go and that's what we're here for. But yeah, I'm pretty disappointed in him. <laughs> It's pretty frustrating for the team to see that happen and yeah, I hope he, he's going to feel it for a bit and I hope he, um, he's here all night helping us fix it. The disappointment was he didn't get to prove what he could have in that qualifying session so you know you should work your way up through your sets of tyres and do the fastest run in the end and he didn't actually get the bank of time. It was pure disappointment. It was, well, wasn't actually angry at him, it was disappointed in him very disappointed for myself and also the team. The car was fast enough to be in the shootout and that's what our goal was. Obviously didn't achieve that, did the complete opposite. If it's going to be a late night, it's only going to be me, B1, Jimmy, and B2 probably. So we don't want to f*** everyone. Okay, yeah. We don't want to f*** everyone. So cars, 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 a sort of late night for everyone. Um, all the mechanics would stay back late and uh, work hard for the first sort of night session of the year, which which you don't want to do. He's not the lone ranger. I mean, pretty much everybody's grabbed the fence there at some stage. But it does have a big effect on your confidence. And our game, as weird as it is, you're out there by yourself and you're in this matchbox and you're blazing this thing around a racetrack at warp speed with all these levels of bravery and commitment required. And when it hurts your confidence, it has a profound effect on what you do from then on. You can easily sort of pack up and go slow, or you can get back on the horse and do a good job. Unlike many drivers who will drop the bottom lip and that's it for the weekend, in typical Anton fashion, he's a race driver. So when he lobbed there the next morning, he was bright and bubbly again, and he was back into it, and he rode it hard. Nice job, mate, nice job. Stay up, stay up. Purple sector, quickest lap, first time through that section again. Push it for me, mate, you push it for me. That's what you got to do. I think that was his way of saying, it doesn't affect me, I'll press on. Next up, David Reynolds, winner of the last race at the back end of the championship last year, Holden Commodore. Well, I don't think there's another thing in our game that's more exciting than a top 10 shootout. I mean, qualifying by itself is fantastic. And it's the opportunity for you to put the best lap you can possibly put together with the best tyres that you have on that weekend. I'm going to break a little later. I'm going to carry a little bit more corner speed. And I'm going to get on the throttle a little early. Man up. Man up. Great lap by David Reynolds. They're watching at Penrite Racing. Needs a good consistent start, as you described, Mark. He's done a 20.5. He's peeled half a second out of James Courtney's time. Nice work. Mate, really good solid lap there. Proud of you for today, mate. Great work. He won so far. Let's see how we go. In our mad world that we're in, top 10 shootouts are the pinnacle. We're all clear for another brand new season. The long road to the Supercar Championship glory begins right here in Adelaide. Green flag, green flag. Ooh. That was nasty. There were both, I think if both cars in the front row were outside the box. McLaughlin's down the inside, 17 on the dirty side of the road and has gone from row two to the lead of the race. Okay, Anton, easy stop. Five, two, yeah, eight, six, stop. Sorry, mate. And you can see that both James and David are involved in a fairly hefty arm wrestle. 
Reynolds and Holdsworth in for their first stop. Uh, pretty close to Fabian, just coming past now. Watch for Anton as well. Oh, there's Anton with his teammate, got away with that. That's the temperature of the road out there at the moment. Important we get past Scotty as quick as we can. So, Awesome work, mate. Awesome work. Love your work, Navy. Proud of you. Keep trucking along. Have a drink. Okay, mate. Way up in the sky, little darling. And if you come, pick you up. Way on the yeah, yeah. Woo! And a victory for Mustang in Adelaide. Awesome, mate. We're not deputy for the Mustang. So a strong start for McLaughlin and both the Red Bulls. Difficult day, Pi, Waters and Erebus not where they likely expected to be either. My gearbox had some bad downshifts and some bad upshifts. Especially out of turn seven, I, if I got on the curb and spun the wheels, it would... Uh, I didn't drink for about ten laps or at the start. Yeah. And it, and boiling water come out, steam was coming out of my helmet. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. Not good, like it was scalding my face. Yeah, well that's what I do, I just burn myself, burn my and face and then I can drink again. <laughs> Fucking steam was coming out. bang bang, I love you. bang bang, Get out of the way! Bang, bang, chitty, bang, bang. <laughs> so after a massive day on Saturday, you've got to get in the car and do it all over again on Sunday. So a chance for redemption now for Anton Di Pasquale, for Penrite Racing and for Erebus. Good job. P7, P7. We've made a top team. Good job, mate. Good job. Good job. Cool. Thanks, guys. Hard work out here. Missing out on the Saturday when I crashed, it just made me more hungry to get it for the Sunday. So to do it Adelaide, I've never done it before. It also rewards the whole team. They spent a whole lot of hours that night, not much sleep, and to reward them with a shootout and having the track to yourself is, uh, is awesome. He's got a big God. block up, it's ruined the lap, and that will have put a flat spot on the front left corner. That's all experience, he'll learn again from that. I don't know what happened with that left front brake. I'm a lot there all weekend. The final corner now, David Reynolds. Former Bathurst winner. He's just punched a 1 minute 20.19. Yeah, nice lap there, mate. Gonna put us in P2, uh, 21.9. What's up, ladies? How I, are I we? I grabbed you yesterday and told you that I was crazy. <laughs> I had to choose a new team, so you're my team. I love you. <laughs> well, I'm going to love you too, so you just got to drive good, okay? Can you can you sign here? Yeah, I can, can yeah. <laughs> I know it's a bit weird, but you know. That's no, alright. <laughs> it's weirder when, like, I have to sign man boobs. Yeah. Cool. Can so I easy. Friday with me? Yeah. Can I play with me? Of course. <laughs> Good luck today, mate. Thanks, Thanks. Me. Give me a hard time, these people. Supercars, get your hearts racing once again in Adelaide. Scott McLaughlin will be on the front row of the grid in the primary position. David Reynolds moves up the third, Cameron Waters alongside him. Another Mustang versus Holt Commodore battle. 250 k's of classic supercars racing. Race number two gets underway. Side by side, they're perfectly aligned on the run into one. Nobody gives any space, Van Gisbergen holds on. This is a move on David Reynolds and I think he's got it done. In fact, there's a bit of contact and David runs wide with hip and shoulder. Chaz tries to look down the inside of David Reynolds, who's a punching bag at the moment. That's the second time he's had a little touch-up today. Now he's down the inside. Good pass. 
they didn't come in and take the opportunity to grab some fuel for Nick Perkett. That's given him track position. He's now at the front of the field. And they did the same thing at Penrite Racing. And have a look at Reynolds down the inside. A move for the lead, and he's made it stick. Nice pass. Very good pass. Nice job, Davey. What will now be interesting is how this unfolds from a fuel standpoint. Hang in there, mate. Hang in there. Let's as you can, please. Down the inside goes Fabian Coulthard on Anton Di Pasquale. Now we now, Dave. We now. Go, go. So here comes David Reynolds out of the lead. He's got 85 litres of fuel to put on. As Reynolds puts the plunge down the inside, gets it done nicely. The Ford Mustang makes it two from two on debut. McLaughlin gets a perfect start to the championship season. Adelaide weekend was a little bit disappointing. It kind of didn't go to plan. You know, we were expecting really good results based off pre-testing and our results from last year. Um, it just didn't, didn't work for us. Our car speed wasn't there. We were a little bit off the pace in both days. And we kind of raced just inside the top 10. And we were kind of hoping for top three. What a way to start season 2019. Adelaide was a lot of different emotions. Um, there was a lot of successful moments, a lot of happy moments, and obviously massive sad and disappointing moments. But overall, I think it was a success. Probably not in the right way, but overall, I think it was a good overall weekend, and there's a lot of positives to take out of it. There was a little bit of a negative feeling because the Mustangs were so dominant, thinking, you know, we can fight for a championship here, and then to sort of see that that was going to be a lot more difficult with what we were facing with the task against those guys was a little bit daunting, I guess. I had no problem with Mustang coming in. I thought it was great because we came in a New Holden uh, last year, but watching the cars the first uh, in Adelaide, I, I was very much, this is not natural. This is not the way we progress naturally. And I was like, hmm. I can't change gears. Yes, you can. You just got to finish and get points, Dennis. Oh, he smoked me. <laughs> yeah. I did. We understand that's not how the rule reads, but the penalty just seems way too harsh. First podium of the year for David Reynolds. Mate, it was an awesome job by the team. Mega in the pit stops. Go, 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 go. Yeah, go. No good. Looks like you're open for business. Oh my god, can I punch him? Looks like you're going to an upper class funeral. 